I killed a man once. Harvey, the hitman Mendoza. Down a dark alley in Area 18. The guy was a career criminal. I was just a kid. They said the bullet went right through his chest. Called me one shot ever since. Said he must have died from shock cause no way a guy like him had a heart. Turns out that ain't the truth. Turns out that little bullet of mine went through something else first. A picture of his wife and kid. Turns out old Harvey had a heart after all. The department said I was a hero. I ain't no hero. Once you kill a man, let's just say, I never been out of that alley ever since. And the longer I done this job, the deeper it goes. apartments on Lorville. Got another homicide. Only this one's got some asshole Hurston execs with deep pockets breathing down our necks to make it go away. Oh, and one more thing. If I hear another word about your boozy breath from some deadbeat who wants to complain about our department, it'll be an early retirement for you. Don't fuck this one up, Monroe. Out. Lorville industrial hellscape built on the backs of poor bastards who thought they never had a choice. And just like the smog that covered it, a city shrouded in lies of plenty spewed out the mouths of its corporate elite. Only good thing about this place were the stiff pores at old m and bar. The kind of pores that help a man forget things he never would otherwise. <laughs> Having a tough morning, Malone? I can smell it on your breath. It's not even noon, Jesus. This asshole never got my name right. Where the stiffs at? Same place they always are. Upstairs. On the floor. Save some for me next time, Malone. Kimball. Morning, Detective. What's the verdict? Fellow's an exec with Hurston Dynamics. Kent Griswold. Pretty high up, too, by the sound of it. And the girl? Name on the letter suggests she goes by Jinxie. But that's all we got so far. Found this on the desk. Letter inside sounds personal. Lover's quarrel. Could be. Turns out Griswold here had a Mrs. Griswold back home. These pricks are all the same. She know about Jane Doe yet? She was off-world. All she knows is her hubby got iced last night. My guess is Mr. Griswold got cold feet and Jinxie here gave him an ultimatum he couldn't refuse. Literally. Then took herself down with him. Nothing fixes a broken heart like a bullet, ain't that right? They got kids? These corpo types ain't got time for kids. You know how it goes. Yeah. Take a load off, Kimball. 
I got it from here. You got it, boss. Can I get you another double, my friend? Keep going till I say stop. You got it, friend. Bartender, that envelope, where'd it come from? A gal named Jinxie. She used to work here. Well, not here, exactly. Uh, she named these for all of her friends. You a friend, too? Wish I was more. She was something special. What happened? She disappeared a few months back. Dead when she got back, she was gonna... <laughs> Show me something real special. Me too. Matter of fact, never seen her so happy before. Must be love. Ha! Worse. She was pregnant. Are you sure about that? Oh yeah. She suddenly wanted to learn all about the twins. She also cut the rest of us off, if you know what I mean. <sighs> I wasn't ready. But I knew it was time to read that letter. My love, I am writing this just before I leave for safe haven. I'm so grateful for your love and support to provide me my first trip outside this awful city for a chance to give birth to our beautiful twins away from that place. I know it's only for a few months, but my heart already aches to be apart for so long. I would dream of the day the twins arrive and you join us. The day we will officially begin our new life together. The day we've both been dreaming about for so long. Your dearest, Jinx. The more I learned about the dead, the more they started to haunt me. I knew I had to pay a visit to this safe haven she spoke about, but I had to take care of someone else first. Rachel's penthouse was in Central Plaza, a monolithic monstrosity that overshadowed most of the city. Inside was just as brutal. Cold corridors and cold stairs kept me on my toes. But if I wanted answers, I'd have to play it cool. In here, I was just another liability waiting to be crushed. Mrs. Griswold. Rachel. She was the best part of a bad idea. Mr. Griswold must have been out of his mind to cheat on this. Never imagined he'd take his own life. You must be used to this sort of thing. <laughs> We're not quite sure what happened yet. I should tell you, there was someone else involved. Someone else? I... I don't understand. A woman. The hell do you mean a woman? I'm sorry. It's just I... I understand. Were they... together? Yeah. That fucking bastard! How long was this going on? Long enough for them to... Well, let's just say she spoke of love. <laughs> love? Who knows? Look, we just wanted to check in and let you know I'm here if you need anything. We're gonna get to the bottom of this, and soon. Got a lead that has me heading out to a place called Safe Haven. Ever hear of it? Kent used to talk about a place out in the savannah, near Security Depot 1. Made it sound like some sort of... club. Club? Good old boys club. You know how this city works. That club is bigger than the city, miss. <sighs> well... I'll head out that way. She that. killed him. 
didn't she? Whatever happened, I'll get to the bottom of it soon enough. I always do. Yes. Good. Have a better day, Rachel. I'll be in touch soon. Police force. <laughs> Dad and security, just like you. Figured it helped me figure you out a little better. Hell, maybe even, uh, maybe even make you proud. Anyway, I finished the academy last week. I got my first beat tonight. I still got your back, Dad. Wherever you are. Love you. Safe haven. I should have known better. Whatever this place was, I knew it ain't what Jinxie had in mind either. The deeper I went, the more things didn't add up. This place felt used and not in a good way. And as empty as it seemed, I could feel the ghosts in its walls, like I was being watched. I came across an active terminal. The secrets it shared were the kinds of things nobody wants to hear. Turns out this place was a safe haven, all right. A place where the skeletons in a man's closet would never be found. Some kind of underground hush facility. And a medical clinic another mile down. was cold and thick. The smell, like burning flesh and sour milk. And worse than that, the truth. It was obvious old Jinxie was set up by the man she loved. Their little secret sent here to be aborted forever. How did Jinxie survive this mess? How did she get back to Griswold? Maybe none of that mattered anymore. Maybe this was the motive I was looking for. I decided to head back to Lawville to break the news to Mrs. Griswold. At the end of the day, we all gotta face the truth, no matter how ugly it can be. something I need to tell you. I'll be right in, detective. Please, make yourself comfortable. 
Take your time. I thought my eyes were playing tricks on me, but the longer I stared, the more real it became. Rachel, by the time you read this, your husband and I will be in room 243 at the L-19 apartments. Our room. God forbid we're still there by the time you arrive. That means he wouldn't run away with me. That he never loved me after all. Then I ask you to do your worst and free me from this misery. If that's not enough to give you the nerve, then maybe these twins will be. He impregnated me with them, then tried to have them killed before it was too late. I can't bear the sight of them, and neither can you, I'm sure. And that's all she wrote, Detective. Rachel. It's Mrs. Griswold. I knew my husband was a bastard, but I never imagined he'd try to murder a hooker. Or worse, have fucking twins with one. You know. I opened my door and found that letter with those abominations. She was right. The sight of them was enough to put the fury of God in me. Mrs. Griswold, please. Put the gun down. She used those twins to bait me, and to let him know that I knew their little secret. Of course he wasn't going to run away with her. I'm surprised he had the balls to stick around and wait for me, though. <laughs> you killed them both? I got even. What about the twins? Burned up with the rest of the trash by now. Another cloud to loom over this godforsaken shithole of a city. Jesus. <laughs> you were never supposed to know any of this, Detective. You were supposed to die at Safe Haven. Rachel. Rachel's dead. Rachel knew there was no way out. Nothing cures a broken heart like a bullet. Ain't that the truth? I wasn't so sure anymore. Kent, Jinxie, Rachel. Their stories just took my life deeper down that same alley I so desperately wanted to escape. The only thing I could do was what I always did. Keep asking questions, and hope one day, the answer I needed, will come. Excuse me. You with sanitation? Yeah. Who are you? Detective Monroe with Stan Security. I'm trying to find some... closure. Uh, okay. You mean for a case or something? What are the chances some kid might accidentally get burned up with the trash? Hmm, this about Ava? Who? Someone left a baby girl at the burn pit. Can you believe that? Named her Ava because the guy that saw her first kept yelling, Save her! Save her! He thought he was saying Ava the whole time. <laughs> Only reason she's still alive is because she was crying like a son of a bitch. Or daughter of a bitch, I guess. <sighs> Poor thing. She's in foster care now, bless her soul. Just the one, huh? Yeah. What do you mean? Nothing. You're a real hero. I mean it. It wasn't the answer I was looking for. But it was better than nothing. I guess another tomorrow. It's right around the corner. Hey, Dad. I thought I'd find you here. Benny. What?
are you doing here? Figured if I could find you, I'd be a shoe in for a detective one day. Detective? That really what you want? Ah, one day. But, right now, I'll settle for a drink with my old man. How about a walk instead? Even better. It's good to see you, Dad. It's good to see you too.